Before I begin my questioning, uh, Mr. Attorney General, would you agree to release to us legal opinions uh, on the constitutionality of the material that you have thus far refused to supply the committee? To the extent that there are legal opinions, I will look at them, and to the extent that they can be provided, I have no objection to that. I don't know if these are OLC opinions that OLC would have uh, an objection to providing, but to the extent that I can, I will make those available to you. Okay. I'll begin my questioning, I guess, by following up. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, you have the executive branch has executive privilege. It's narrow. It's well-defined. There's case law. If you do not find a legitimate basis to deny us the material we've asked for, we will seek the remedies necessary to compel. Having said that, <clears throat> I appreciate your being here today, and I don't want to waste any of yours or my time on this at this point. Let's go through a couple of items here. First of all, <clears throat> it is reported through discovery that we have received that uh, Mr. Monty Wilkinson may have informed you of Agent Terry's uh, murder in a timely fashion. Is that true? Uh, he may have. I know the murder occurred December 14th. I heard about it, I think, probably within 24 hours. I don't know if it came from Monty Wilkinson or from some other member of my staff, but I knew about the murder within 24 hours of its occurrence. When you were informed about that within 24 hours, did anyone inform you or allude to the fact that the weapons found at the scene were from Fast and Furious? Uh, no, I didn't know about Operation Fast and Furious until the beginning parts of 2011 after I received that letter from Senator Grassley, I guess at the end of uh, January, and then that was about Operation Gunrunner. I actually learned about the Fast and Furious operation in February of that year. Would you, make, a, would you make available to us through whatever records you can uh, find the name of the person who informed you so that we can ma ascertain why that individual would not or did not tell you what was widely known almost immediately that in fact law enforcement allowed weapons walked basically that these were fast and furious weapons the emails that we've received through whistleblowers show us extensively that law enforcement was aware and concerned about it we would like to know why someone kept that from you well, I'm not sure anybody kept it from me. I mean, I found out about it, as I said, I think in January, February of 2011, and I'm not even sure how I found out about it. It might have been he even threw uh, either the, a letter I received from Senator Grass in February 9th. I'm not sure if, he, if it was contained in there. There were certainly media reports about it in February. Uh, I, again, I'm not sure exactly how I found out about the term fast and furious. Would it be fair, from your own knowledge, to say that neither Lanny Brewer nor, as a head of the criminal division, nor Jason Weinstein, did anything to stop the program after they learned of what it was about. Stop the program? Fast and Furious, prior, prior to uh, uh, Brian Terry's death. Yeah. I mean, they both admitted that they were aware of um, Operation Wide Receiver and never connected the techniques that were used in Wide Receiver to Operation Fast and Furious, and as a result, did not take any action in that regard, and both have admitted that that was a mistake. Well, let's go through this. Uh, I think in my limited time, I want to make sure that we, we do deal with uh, wide receiver versus fast and furious. As of today, do your law enforcement authorities, such as the ATF, have the ability to see a per straw purchase, believed straw purchase, and rather than arrest them at the door with no evidence, follow them to the next location. See them? In other words, do, does law enforcement have the ability to follow suspected gun traffickers with the weapons in their car from location to location? I mean, and to keep them under constant surveillance? Yes. They certainly have that capacity. Okay. So, as far as we've been reported, every piece of evidence shows that in gun walker, I mean, sorry, in uh, wide receiver, Every effort was made, unsuccessfully in many cases, which is one of the things that concerns us, to follow the weapons. To your knowledge, was there ever an, an order under wide receiver to abandon following the weapons and let them walk? Well, I, I'd say, you know, during the early, as I've seen more on wide receiver as we have provided... Well, well, yeah, but I, 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 a yes or no would be a good start, Mr. Attorney General. Do you know of any time in which people were ordered to peel off and let the guns walk under wide receiver. 
I'm not sure about whether they were ordered to or not, but I do know that in the early phases of the investigation, um, observations were made of people buying guns and decisions made not to surveil them after those purchases were made, and as a result, 100, 400, I'm not sure exactly what the number is, of guns walked. And there were complaints raised by people connected to the investigation about the fact that guns were walking in Operation Wide Receiver. Since it was never allowed to simply let known straw buyers, known guns fall into illicit uh, criminals' hands, uh, have you taken any action to fire anyone or discipline anyone from Operation Wide Receiver? Well, Operation, Operation Wide Receiver occurred uh, in the prior administration. I don't think that... Uh, well, we're not talking about political appointees. We're talking about people who would transcend the transition. Do, have you, to your knowledge, disciplined anyone from Wide Receiver? Uh, no, I have not. Um, that have you disciplined anyone from Fast and Furious? No, I have not as yet. As yet. There have been personnel changes made um, at ATF. We obviously have a new U.S. attorney um, in Arizona. Uh, we have made personnel switches at ATF. People have been moved out of positions. Um, I'm certainly going to wait and see what I get from the Inspector General, the report that we have from the majority. I don't know if the minority is going to uh, um, minority. I don't know if the majority is going to produce a report. Um, and I will be taking all that into consideration, in addition to all the things that I'm able to find out on my own and uh, make personnel changes as I think they are appropriate. Well, my time has expired. Uh, I will say that I don't think the minority report is going to do you a whole lot of good since it seems to say you, more or less nothing happened. With that, I'd recognize the author of the minority report, Mr. Cummings, for his round of questions. Uh, I, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I respectfully disagree with what you just said. 